Hey guys, Hot Mama Janelle here on Tracy Reads Blog today, and I'm here with a video tutorial to teach you guys, or at least introduce you, to layer masks. Um, layer masks are great because once you use them on a layer, um, you can edit your layer and leave it fully intact. So you can decide if you don't like your edit later, you can remove that mask and still have your original layer, as opposed to um, you know, altering your layer by erasing or painting on top of it or um, doing something that will permanently change your layer. Masks are great because they allow you the change but also give you the capability to keep it intact. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is just something really little but that I actually use quite often. I'm going to go ahead and select this greenery layer right here and you can see that I'm hanging out underneath the flower. I, I've got just a little piece of the greenery right here that's still showing and I'm going to use the layer mask to hide that portion of my greenery and the reason that I would want to hide it instead of erase it is I may not be set here. I may still want to rearrange or move. Um, move that layer around and if I do decide to move it later I of course don't want this erased stem hanging out um, that I'll have to deal with. I would of course have to go back in and reload it and reshadow it and get me a new one that wasn't erased. So I'm gonna move this layer here and you know I could move it there and hide the stem completely under the flower but I like the positioning of it here. So I've got my layer selected you can see it's highlighted in my layers panel and now I'm going to go down here to this gray rectangle with the yellow or excuse me the white circle in it that says add layer mask and I'm going to click on that and you can see once I do that this white box pops up and that is the layer mask and you can see that the corners um, are selected they have the border around them and that means that it is the actual layer mask that's selected and that's what you want when you're working with your layers if you accidentally click over here onto your layer itself you would be editing your layer and making unchangeable things happen and you don't want to do that so go ahead and make sure that your layer mask is selected and then things that you need to know about layer mask is black conceals or hides and white reveals so I'm going to come down here to my colors and if you don't have black and white selected which are the default colors you can go ahead and hit your D button on your keyboard and that will bring up your default colors of white and black and if you hit your X key it will actually switch between the two so it changes it from black to white white to black but I want black because black conceals so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my brush tool and I can do that by hitting B on the keyboard or I can even go over here and select my brush tool and then I'm just gonna select a soft brush and you know what it doesn't matter what size it is because it's hidden under the flower and I'm just gonna click once right on that stem and it's gone now I didn't erase it I just masked it so if I come over here and right click on my layer mask I can say disable and there it is it's right back there and you can see the red X over here on my layer is telling me that it's been disabled and if I right click I can say enable and it's back so just a very simple change but actually one that I use a lot a lot a lot when I'm doing my clusters and um, just because I can and sometimes these beautiful greeneries have really pretty leaves but they're way too long so I want to use what I can and not have a whole bunch of stuff sticking out from under the flower. So very very simple but that's not the main reason or the main thing that I'm going to show you today. I want to show you how to take, um, for my purposes today, I'm going to take this photo with this burgundy maroon curtain background and turn it into this photo right here so uh, here we go I love this photo it's a photo of my nephews I think they're adorable but I cannot get past the color of that curtain I hate I almost hate this this great picture because of that curtain so I decided I needed to go in and make a change so that I actually loved the picture like it deserved to be loved and that I did with using layer masks so the first thing that I'm gonna do I've opened up my photo and I'm going to create a copy by doing that I'm gonna hit control J 
and now you can see that I've got another layer right here, an exact copy of the one that I've got. Now I could change that curtain to any color, um, but I'm for my purposes today, I, I really think black will work great. So in order to do that, I'm going to turn this top layer off for a second so that you can see. I'm going to come down here to the adjustments layers, and I'm going to throw a black and white layer over the top of my photo. Now, it's taken that background layer and made it black and white, which that's perfect. That's what I want to show um, underneath my photo. But I don't want the boys to be in black and white. I like the color that they have. So I'm going to turn this layer back on on top, and now I'm going to add a layer mask. So I select my layer, come down here to the rectangle with a circle in it, add a layer mask, and click. And now you can see it's given me a layer mask, it's highlighted, and remember, black conceals and white reveals. So what I want to do, I want to black out all of this curtain. And then when I do that, it will show me what's underneath it, which will be the black curtain. So let's go ahead and do that. Turn that back on. And you know what, that brush will take me forever to do like that small, so I'm going to adjust my size, and I can do that by pushing the right bracket make it nice and big here to start and of course I'll get smaller um, once we get a little closer but I'm just painting black onto my white layer mask which is going to hide or conceal the layer that I'm currently working with all right, now you can see if you look over here, all of the black is what's hidden. So I can't see the burgundy from that layer. I'm seeing underneath to the black, and the white is what is still shown through on this layer. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in because we want to get close around the edges here. down a little bit and this brush is way too big to be working with now so I'm going to push my left bracket key and we're going to make this smaller and continue to mask or brush all of this burgundy out of here. Now say I make a mistake and I come over here on his hands um, very easy to fix. Remember, white reveals. So if I hit my X key to change the color from black to white, then I can come back over and continue to paint on, and white will reveal or show through what I painted on it. You know, I'm going to zoom even a little bit closer, switch back to black so I can hide that red. And you know, the thing that's great about this photo is that it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, I just want to get rid of the horrible burgundy background, which I am accomplishing. So I'm going to be happy because I can still see their adorable faces. Love this photo. We're going to get in here by his hair. And I apologize, for some reason, uh, my software, when I use brushes, it makes them look a little, it makes them look weird. It should just look like a circle right now, painting, painting on top here, and I don't know why it is uh, doing what it does, but I apologize. It's just a circle brush. All right. Getting pretty close here. Scooch over a little bit. Oh, I can see I've left some red in here. There we go. Come down. And uh, you know, you can do this with any color. You can use, you can go back to your adjustment layers panel and do, um, you know, like a hue and saturation adjustment. You can do selective color adjustment, and it would change the entire color of your photo. But as long as you have that copy that you've made to start with, um, you can always mask your original or your main image 
um, in or out of the photo so that you can get the exact color that you want. Okay. All right. So there we go. Let's do the before here. Whoops. That's not the before. If I want to show you the before, I need to actually right click on my layer mask and say disable. So there's the before with that curtain that I was having a really hard time with. And if I right click again and say enable, here's the after. So I like this much better. It's much easier for me to work with. I don't feel like I'll have trouble finding a kit that will match this picture much better than what it was, what it looked like previously. So hopefully you've learned something new. You've learned how to edit your photos a little bit and how to um, mask things out in your layouts as well. I also use these layer masks a lot when I'm working with confetti or paint if I have journaling that I want to do. Um, I don't like it when the confetti or the paint sits on top of the journaling because then you miss out on a lot of your journaling. So I'll actually go in and mask out a piece here and there of confetti or sequins so that it doesn't interfere with my journaling. So hopefully you've learned something new and you can apply this to your scrapbook pages. If you have any questions, let me know and I will do the best I can to answer them. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.